right, here we are again, and it's chapter 10. That's right. This is our final <laughs> chapter. I mean, there is a chapter 11. It's kind of a recap. Uh, this I is rhymed, really, honey. You did. You did? I, I didn't said, it. here we are again, and it's, it's chapter, chapter 10. 10. <laughs> so weird. Okay. <laughs> Seasons in your marriage. Every season of marriage is going to be different. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, there's really kind of like three seasons in your marriage. There's the, and, and when we talk about this, we're, we're kind of talking about like generally that there's a before kids season, a, a, a season with kids, and then there's a season without kids. Yes. So, but you know, every marriage looks different and you know. Right. Some people uh, may may not have children in their marriage. Some people might get married, married with, with children with children already. And exactly. so we, we get that. But we want to talk about the different seasons. You know, uh, there's different seasons in life, isn't there? Mm -hmm. there's summer, winter, spring. You guys get it. But also uh, imagine a farmer who doesn't have a plan. Really, this chapter is about having a plan for the next season. If the, the farmer doesn't have a plan, what's going to happen is all of a sudden it's spring. He didn't he didn't till the soil. He didn't get things ready for planting, and now he's in panic mode. And what we don't want is your marriage to hit panic mode because you didn't have a plan for the next season. Exactly. And so what's season number one? Um, season number one is the season where it's just you and him. Yeah. You guys together, and there's no kids quite yet. That's right. So we're it's the season of so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> we're so busy, though. <laughs> you have you don't no really... idea what busy is until you have children. <laughs> That's so true. But we find ways to stay busy. And uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 5, uh, there's a scripture that kind of shows what God's up to in that first uh, uh, season of marriage. Yeah, it says, uh, when a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out with the army, nor be charged with any duty. He shall be free at home one year and shall give happiness to his wife, whom he has taken. That's a crazy concept. A year. A whole year? Yeah, we talk about like a honeymoon being like... I think like, I actually would kind of like that. Well, I think that you're built to like that. <laughs> Imagine a, a man taking a year and what's his goal? It said to... What was it? He to shall, give yep. happiness to his wife. His job is to make her happy for one solid year. And you know what God's saying here is that you got to lay a good foundation. Yes. Because uh, this is the time where you slow down a little bit. Um, I have a story that I tell. It's a, our first year of marriage. Mm -hmm. I know what you're going to talk about. Yeah, a man named Hank Myers. And this guy's a legend at Living Word Bible Church. Um, and he was a big part. He, he passed away a few years ago. But um, I'll tell you what, he impacted my life in so many ways. He sat me down that first year of marriage and he said, Jason, what are you doing? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, it's your first year of marriage. He shared the scripture with me. He's like, starts going through all the things that I did around the church. He's like, you know, you, obviously you got your job. You're down here with the worship team. You volunteer to teach the sixth grade Bible study. Mm -hmm. You're involved in the children's ministry worship. You have your band, which practices three times a week. He was like, when are you with your wife? I'm like, oh, I, you know, I get to see where you're going with this. <laughs> he was like, slow down. And really, this is what it's about. When you get married, you might already have kids. Life might already be slammed busy. But mm -hmm. figure out how you're going to slow down and take a year to really focus on happiness for your wife because you're laying a foundation that's going to be super necessary for when the storms come and there are storms and when they come you're going to be rock solid because you took some time to just be married yes I like that season two season two is the season with children and um, I think from experience mm -hmm. but also from just uh, talking to other married people that have children when when children enter the scene um, you really got to navigate and figure out how to keep the marriage <laughs> full of passion and sure. keep the marriage, keep it going, keeping it we're, rock solid we're up because, all night. you know, um, kids come in and, and they do, they do demand a lot of your time and they need that time. Yeah. But there is a balance that you have to figure out in that season because what's most important to that child is that. They have a parent that loves each other and loves their marriage and has a strong marriage. That ultimately is their number one thing, knowing that mom and dad love each other. And so figuring out this season 
um, it is a challenge it is. to figure it out. Um, we have that one kind of concept that we say is it's just kind of looking at, well, what came first? So the marriage yes. came first, so that's God's design to be the nucleus of the family is the marriage, keeping that at the center. When you, It's so easy in today's society to become child-centered that the couple now makes the new child the center of the family. And the two mistakes that happen there is the first one is that um, that child will live their whole life feeling like the world revolves around them. (laughs) And that's going to be difficult because we want to raise kids that are giving and compassionate and empathetic. And the second thing is is that they do, like she said, want to know that mom and dad love each other the most. Kids, kids feel more safe and secure knowing that mom and dad are staying together because they have a great relationship. They may cry when you go out on the date. But in the end, they're going to be happier because they see mom and dad loving each other. So parenting, when you have, have, start having drama with kids, and, and uh, it can become a muddled mess. And uh, having children can either become this great strength for the family, mm-hmm. or it can become a strain on the family. And really it's about how are, how are the kids, are they being raised, are they disciplined, are they... Uh, are we parenting the same way? Do we have some, some of the same ideas about parenting? So we just suggest get parenting books, right? The farmer that plans for the next season. Read and have agreement with what your plans are for yes. your family. Get some books and have a plan, right? Yes, definitely. And then uh, uh, the, the last thing I'd last want to... season. No, I want to stay in oh. this season for just one more second. Okay. When it comes to blended families... Yes, um, that's right. The same principle applies. What came first? Who came first? So when we get married and we already have kids then there's some simple concepts there. There's some moving parts that we need to be aware of. The, my kids really did come first if we got married with kids. Her kids really did come before me. I'm the new guy. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> what we do is like, say, for instance, her kids are acting up. If I discipline her kids, then she's going to mama bear me. She's going to defend her family and her kids from me. I, instead of being a protector, now I became the violator. And they're going to create a mess. So my job is just to love her kids unconditionally, and her job is to discipline her kids. My job is to discipline my kids. Yeah. Her job is to love my kids unconditionally yeah. and defend them uh, when, when they need some defending. And this, and then slowly beginning to move each other into that first place position. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you know, I'm the new guy. And if, if she moves me into the first place position too fast, then I'm the guy who stole their mom from the kids. And they'll never forgive me for that. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be that. So it's a blended family. You're going to have to move slow, recognize what the goal is. And the the final thing I'll leave with this is that I was talking to a man once, and he's like, the marriage is supposed to be first, but my wife keeps putting the kids before me. And I said, oh, that's exactly what she's supposed to do. (laughs) You're supposed to put her number one. She's built by God to put her kids number one. Mm -hmm. That's a normal moving family that Mm -hmm. is functional, and it's how it's supposed to work. So... It's okay. She will always love and put her children first. That's how she's built by God. But what speaks volumes to your husband, what says, I love you more than anything, is when he does ask you out for a date night, mm-hmm. and he does ask for time, and he's he's trying to develop this, you need to try your hardest to get that babysitter, to plan and, and be okay with leaving the kids for a couple hours. I know it's hard it was it was tough for me um, when the kids were really young. Yeah. Um, but you figure it out, and even if it's just a good three four hours out of the house, I think that it 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 speaks to you that I yeah. am in love with you. I I, I don't cherish you. And well, and and I need you to put on the the wife hat sometimes. <laughs> it's good to get out of the house to take off the mommy hat <laughs> and put on the wife hat. Yeah. Because that's very attractive. Yes. Yes. And then okay, the third season. Third season. Mm. Um, the kids are all moved out. out. Empty nest. Empty nesters. Yeah. Um, and you need to have a plan for this. Yes, you do. And I um, I think we're kind of talking from experience in this yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd say four years ago um, when our son Christian, actually it was four years ago. I know. That he moved out and went to off to college. Um, life started to really kind of awaken in our minds and go oh my gosh like they're the kids are actually gonna and then and leave then one day the very next year or you, you, two years later katie yes. went off to the dorms at asu yes. and suddenly we had two kids yes and then we were like what just happened yeah uh in proverbs 29 18 it says where there is no vision the people perish and um so 
the empty nester, the it's ma- it's about making a plan for your future. And Jason and I are kind of in this this phase right now where our children are are growing up and they're moving out and they're getting their own lives and yeah, you know, graduating from college and stuff. And um, it it kind of was just um, it, I don't know, like a light bulb just went off in our minds. We need to make a plan. Like, what does it look? What, what do our lives look um, 15, like 15 years from now? What does this look like for us? And um, so we just started to plan out what, what we saw our lives looking like and having um, a vision for it. And do you want to add more to that? Well, I think I, I, recognizing that, you know, you've lived a lot of experiences in life by the time you get to the age where your kids are moving out. And those experiences have culminated into a great deal of potential there's a great deal of wisdom that you've had over the time and and being able to draw on that to start maybe that business now. Like you're not going to make the mistakes that you would have made when you were 20. To start that new thing, to, to think big and have a big plan. Just because we're in our 40s and our 50s, our 60s, life is so not over. There's so much left to do. And so having a plan that takes you, for me, I... I like to believe what God said, 120 years. And so why not have a big plan for what God has for you? Maybe you want to travel now. You've got the time to finally travel. And you can run your business from abroad as you're traveling around or uh, whatever that plan is. Have a plan. Mm -hmm. Have a vision for that future. Um, And so this book we've looked at, we'll just kind of recap real quick. Okay. What have we looked at? Having a weekly meeting. Yeah. Uh, but you know, maybe that looks different for everybody. I, I I would suggest, you know, more than just a week, but let's just start at meeting once a week. And have the goal is to really have, be in tune with each other's desires and wants out of life. We want to, um, remember what matters. Remember the good things we learned about, uh, the language of remembering. Yep. Forget the bad. Think about the good. Yep. Then we went on to, uh, the language of kindness and loving the soul of your mate. And then we talked about the language of the spirit and how we feed the spirit is the spiritual food, which is found at the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. The best place that we can be in our marriage is once a week, be in God's house yes, and be was, getting fed. That's a good chapter. Yeah. Um, the next chapter was the language of passion, um, about affection and the right words to your spouse and yeah. the right words about your spouse. Yeah, yeah, the, the words we're saying matter. The next one was leaving your father's household, and, and really it was about the language of us. It was moving away from the language of me and mine and hers and what, you know, she, but becoming an us, uh, our things, our friends, our life, our future. Yep, and then the next cha- chapter was the language of your marriage expectations, so... Wealth and what riches are in your home. That's right. You don't have to look out here for the good things. God's given you all the good things, and he's going to bless you in the land that he has given you. And then we talked about the roles of a man. Mm -hmm. And And the roles of a woman. And how they work together. (laughs) And then we just, in this chapter, talked about the seasons that we go through. And so we hope you enjoyed the class. Yes. Thank you so much. God bless you.